Welcome to the Nash Podcast, brought to you by the Village Hotel Club. This week on the podcast, we have got Gary Lowe and David Birch. How are we? Yeah, good, thank you. Good. Good. Where do we start? So, how do you two know each other? Um, don't. <laughs> I'm, I made him what he was. <laughs> Obviously, I, I signed Dave um, pretty soon in my time here. I signed from Glossop. And he ended up playing how many games, Dave? I think it was 500 and odd. Only, only a few then. Only a few, yeah. He was sub 480 times. <laughs> he couldn't get rid of me in the end. No. <laughs> so, yeah, we, we became good friends and, you know, proud to say I know his family very well now. You know, his uh, brother, his sisters, um, his wife, his parents. So, yeah, we became very good friends over a long time. I don't know how many years it was. Obviously, family games is it's a few seasons, but yeah, Dave was, was fantastic for me. Um, was skipper for many years, um, and one of them players that, as a manager, you know you can trust. And eventually, I, when I left here after I think it was eleven years, I took him to Highbury, man, and, and he lifted the trophy there. Took them into the conference. So, yeah, a lot of lot of history between the two of us, and um, a wonderful footballer, but also a top pal. What was he like to play under? <laughs> Uh, hard work sometimes to be honest <coughs> no, he was uh, he was like an old what I'd call an old school manager very uh, you know if you needed telling you got told you know like we've just been saying then before we started you know in our change rooms you had to be a strong character because if you weren't you didn't really stay long did you no you really lost you you know and pretty quick. well we loved a, a rant and a rave so yeah, but it was enjoyable, you know, we were, we worked hard, but we always had good lads, so lads that could take the, you know, the, the, the rollicking, should we say. So And some good players, <coughs> I mean, obviously we spoke about there, but there was a lot of very good players here. Yeah, so we'll we, we start from, how, how did you become Curzon manager? I took my first job at Woodley. Um, and the first full season, I, I won the league with Woodley. Was you playing prior to going into managing? Or? I played about 100 years ago, yeah. I was a pro for seven years, eight, nearly eight years. Um, and then st- when I came out of pro football, I stayed away from the game for a good few years. And then someone asked me to get involved a little bit at Woodley. I did for a couple of months and then the manager went. Um, I took the job and we won the league on the last game of the season. And we picked Curzon for the title. Um, and then a couple of weeks later, I was approached by Harry Twamley and Harry Galloway uh, to take the job here. They was at the old stadium then, at National Park. And I remember meeting them in the Broadwick Hotel in Ashton, and they got all these plans out of the new stadium, massive rolls of paper. And I believed them. I knew Harry anyway. I, you know, sometimes I think people can spin you a rattle of tails. I, I believe them, it was genuine. They had fantastic plans for the football club. Um, convinced me to leave Woodland to go to Curzon and that's how I started at Curzon in I think 2000, 2000. What was it like here there as a manager? Well, it was tough because I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> Some people said I didn't know what I was doing <laughs> at the end. <laughs> but um, yeah you learn, you make a million mistakes and but Harry Twamley was always a, and Harry Galloway and Ronnie Capstick were three great fellas among you know, there was on name them three, there's lots of people here. But they guided me and helped me and educated me really in, in the running of a football club, the whole thing. So it's only got for Harry, he's a very close friend now, Harry Twamler. Um, and yeah, I just learned my trade and, and made lots of mistakes. And the first couple of years I struggled, you know, and in this modern day, you know, I may well have got sacked. Um, I, mean, I remember one occasion we played an Antwitch here and we got battered at home about 4 0, 5 0. And I got my assistant together and the physio. I said, Get the chairman, chief exec. I said, That's me. And I would have resigned. And I got him in the office. And they came in, Harry Galloway and Harry Tromley came in and he said, What's the problem? I said, The problem? You're not just saying that. Was that I in said, your first season? I think it was my second season. season. And I said, uh, I take full responsibility for it. It's not good enough. And uh, I'm going to resign. And Harry Twem looked at me and said, no, you're not. And I looked at him and he said, you got us in this mess. Get us out of it. And slammed the door and walked out. 
<laughs> that was that. So then I stayed there for 11 years. Um, and slowly we built some, you know, I picked up players like David, um, Carnell, Worsley, Weirden, the other way, just endless. James Agu, Chris Curley. Yeah. Um, no, Mickey Norton. I mean, we, we slowly built a side and then probably after three or four we had to build another one. But yeah, wonderful times, close, and you know, the club's very close to me. And um, you know, good times. What was it like the first time when you met him? It was, uh, <clears throat> I think when we first met, I played against him for Glossop. Uh, I was only about 18, I think, 19. <clears throat> and uh, I remember playing him at home at Surrey Street, and it was a bit of a, we weren't the bit greatest the grounds back in the day, no. Surrey Street. Uh, but it was my first proper non-league club, really. We played Curzon, and Curzon was fancied for the league. It was quite a fancy team then. Uh, and we were just a sort of a team, middle of the middle of the road sort of team, and we played these. And I always remember playing, I think, what was it called, the, the wing, or was it? Carter. Pete Carter. Pete Carter. He had a player. Great player. Left wing, and I was right back. And I always remember playing the game, and I was a proper like uh, I was a bit nervous because he was like quite an established non league mm -hmm. player and he was a good player and I was only a young lad and I remember having a, a good game against him and he tried signing me after that uh, wanted me to come and sign like that week and the week after but I stayed till the end of the season because uh, I'd had a good season I was going to pick up a few awards you know like player of the year and stuff and he was fuming with me so when I signed he was always he always yelled it against me for a bit saying you should have come soon just went to grand sign on face where him I think <laughs> <laughs> the guy's getting about 30 quid then on the back yeah. of the crisp. Yeah, i got to put it up to 32. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, he was a young lad playing in the counties. Um, I mean, I think Carnell was, was in the reserve team at Hyde. Yeah, yeah. Chris Worsley was at Spring Yard. Yeah, yeah. Um, Matty yeah. was at Glossop, Matty Wayne had a yeah, period at Glossop. Yeah. So there were lads that, you know, were playing at a level they shouldn't have been really. And fortunately, we, we managed to pick one and two and three and four and, and slowly built aside and um, but for a young lad he was a quite daunting sort of bloke you know what see scary when you went up against him yeah because and, and when when you sign for him you soon realize like when you pre-season the first pre-season you do and they're screaming and bawling at you and it was like like i say it was a lot old school then wasn't it it was still a lot of running yeah but i also like to think that i got very close to the players oh, yeah, in fact I had, a, I had a period in management where i questioned myself am i getting too close really Yes, I felt, he was I felt that. that. He had that. Yeah. I felt that. I just felt because I do think, and David had to give you an angle more as a player because I can't remember my playing days. But I think in any management, I think there has to be an element of fear. It might only be small, and it might be tucked away somewhere. But I think they need to know that they have to have that. So I think I calmed down eventually over the years. Um, but sometimes you have to go in there and frighten the living down out of and the things would get thrown and the pair would be coming off the walls. <laughs> you know, it was, a, it was a tough place to be. And, and like David said, I mean, he's never said it before, but I understand it. You know, when you're a young lad and it's daunting, I suppose. But on the other hand, like you say, there always was that respect there because, you know, mum, when you spoke to him one on one, you know, he, he asked about you, what you was doing with your life, if you've got, you got missus, you know, I didn't have kids. Or... It was always important, I felt, to get to know the girlfriends and wives. And the, the mums and dads came to me. That was important to me because it was a bond, if you know what I mean. Yeah. You, you got to know the whole thing. And I would always make sure that I would speak to Kate, speak to his dad. <coughs> Your mum never came that much, no, really. But no. it, it do's and things that I felt it was important to go and introduce myself to them. Because these lads were committed like you couldn't believe. And there wasn't fancy money around that. But they were committed kids. And I always felt that it was very important to get to know the family, if you could. What and Kate's it? very attractive anyway, so it was easy. <laughs> <laughs> what was it like when you had your first success as a manager here? Well, we used to joke that we didn't really win an awful lot here, although we competed at the very highest in, in leagues and years when there was a lot of big traffic coming through. You know, Chester, Fylds, FC United, Charlies. There was, a lot of, Alifax, there was a lot of big clubs around with big money. Uh, and we didn't have big money, so we was punching above our weight. I think it's fair to say. But you know, as we as the team progressed and progressed, I think the last four years we got in the playoffs four years running, 
And in two of those years, we'd had fantastic cut runs. We went to the semi final of ours, missed out on Wembley by one game. Um, and we got to the FA Cup second round. And as a non league football club, if you get involved in those competitions, you have a massive backlog of fixtures. Um, if you remember, David, in two of those seasons when we got to the playoffs, we were playing Saturday, Monday, Thursday, Saturday. It was ridiculous. Yeah, every day of the week, yeah. And the, the league never helped me. You know, we used to appeal. The FAs and the leagues didn't help me. You know, they was all there with the blazers on and, you know, loving the moment when there was television stuff in and that their league was being represented by us and do so well. But then when we wanted some help from them, we generally didn't get it. Um, I don't think there was anything it's occurs in particular. I think it still goes on now. But it made it tough. But um, Do you think that hindered you, that season or? Those two seasons, without doubt, I think it affected us. We didn't have time to wash the kit. I mean, it was ridiculous. Um, and I think other clubs that have good cup runs, you find that the season will they'll struggle after it because the demands is, is too big. Yeah, we'll touch on the cup runs in a second, but mm. when, when you get to the playoffs, so like four seasons in a row, does it get to the point where you sort of you question it, whether whether you can't take it any further? Um, the thing about playoffs is you, got, you, you can't fix it for 12 months. Yeah. It's not like losing a game or losing three or four games and you can turn that thing around. If you fail in the playoffs, it takes 12 months to put that right and there's no shortcut to that. So it was tough and, and, and uh, Dave obviously been involved in all them and they were heartbreaking games oh, and they were yeah. tough games. Yeah. You'd done so well and we were competing <coughs> with clubs with a lot, lot more money than us. Yeah. Um, and we was very proud, I think, that, that we could compete with them. I mean, a lot of the big clubs used to come in and get battered, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. I remember battering Halifax here. Chester it. In fact, someone sent me a, a clip of a programme when we knocked Halifax out of the trophy here. Up front was Lee Gregory, who's, who scored a million goals for Millwall. Yeah. And Jamie Vardy. We beat them 3 or 4 1, and Vardy got a late consolation goal. And they were probably two leagues above us then. Yeah. But yeah, we competed with them all and um, just couldn't get it done at the very end. And like I said, the two years with the cup runs, I think, was a valid excuse. Yeah. So when when we first got promoted, did we get promoted under you, Martin Senna? We went under one. We went up once. I don't know if that was a, a when they were jig, juggling all the leagues together and cutting numbers and stuff. We finished second, I think, in the mm. Northwest Counties Premier Division, which is probably like the I think FC won it. Peterborough North FC won it, and we went up with them. We went yeah. up with them. Yeah, so we got promoted as runs up, mm. uh, which put us into then the Unibon North, as it's known now. I think so, yeah. But like the Northwest Counties back in them days was probably like a Unibon North. Yeah. It was a lot better standard the than what it is now, now, I would say. No disrespect to the, the level that it is now. No, but. there was it was tough. <coughs> and like I said, Chester had a fortune. Fylde had a fortune. Bradford Park Avenue, I think we finished second two once. Yes. Who had yeah. fortunes. There were clubs around with three, four times our budget. Yeah. So it's still, it's still the case now though, isn't it, I think? Yeah, I think it is, and, and I think it, it, it shows that, you know, I hear a lot of talk about money and how important it is, it is important, but that because you've got the biggest wage bill, you should win the league, or if you've got the eighth biggest, less, least wage bill, you shouldn't do. Well, I don't agree with that. I think you can. I think it was a fine line between us getting promoted and, and a good few numbers in them years, and then when myself left here and went to hide and David came with me, we had, I think, the second lowest wage bill in the league. People said you weren't entitled to win it. Well, maybe not, but we did. Mm -hmm. um, so I think a lot of talk about these big clubs that are knocking about now with big money, but I think a lot of the big clubs spend the money badly. You know. Yeah. So um, you touched on the FA Cup. What was that like to, uh, for obviously as a player as well, to do well in that? Unbelievable. It was, it was like the most surreal... I mean, you start off in the early rounds and every non-league club will start in a minute and as you get a bit of momentum going on, I think it probably sort of started at home when we played Inkler. We played Inkler away first Inkley time we away. drew there. We got battered, by the way, but I'm not for we sure. We scored last, last kick of the game, Danny Whelan. Great goal. Great little player. And he was a good footballer. And he scored well. last kick of the game, and like, like Gaz said, we got battered and we brought him here on the Monday in a replay. I was suspended for the away leg, the, the first game. So are you the reason we got through? That's <laughs> and then I, I, I played and we won on penalties here. Eh? Uh, but we, have, but we, but we, we deserved it. We really. deserved it. We were a better team, went to extra time, and then Dave Carnell thinks he had two or three yeah. penalties. And then you get Exeter at home. And it, I've still got my shirt home because we had our names put on the back of the shirt. The club made it a bit of an occasion. Mm. Uh, 
and it was just unbelievable. I think we went for something to eat somewhere before the game. We took them to the village, yeah. Because yeah. um, I didn't want them getting involved there when, when Exeter arrived. And there was a lot of TV and everything was around. I, yeah. I just thought, <clears throat> don't really want them to uh, be starting to burn the candle, if you like. So we yeah. went to the village for pretty much, I don't know if you remember, I don't know who it was, there was an opera singer. Yeah, she come in. Was in staying in the hotel and somebody tapped her up. Yeah. I said, listen, they the said, wedding, what's going on? She was doing the wedding. And they said, uh, and they pulled me and said, listen, this girl sang for the pleasure one. And I said, get her in. And so she sang for the pleasure. It was unbelievable. And it was off the cuff, it wasn't around. And we got an opera singer singing in front of her. What, was that on the pitch? No, oh, in, in the, the village. Yeah. We had a suite there where yeah. they had the pre match meal and we sat down and we talked about certain things. And she came in and sang to us. It was unbelievable. The whole thing was, to, I remember when we got took out uh, by the evening news. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Manchester Evening News took me and Gaz out because I was captain, even manager. Got took to uh, town. Yeah. And they brought the real FA Cup. It had two guards with it, didn't it? Yeah. And we had pictures with it and they took us out mm. for a meal. And I was getting, I remember going on TV for we an did, interview. We did loads of TV. And it was like radios were ringing me. It was just, you felt it's like a, a real bit, moment. You, yeah, you felt like a, like. Oh, it was. Well, they felt like footballers. Yeah. You know, I, yeah, met, yeah. I remember I've seen clips of where, who's the guy at the Sky Sports uh, in the after, in, on Saturdays? He does the... The one that's very good, reels oh. a million things up. Who holds it? Jeff. Jeff, Jeff Sterling. Sterling. Yeah, Jeff Sterling. Sterling. Yeah, I mean, I've seen clips of where he said, he's going, it's going to him, because I've got one up against Exeter. Yeah. And it's two now. And it's three now. Was so it match of the day as well? No, they flew me down to London on the Sunday morning uh, and I did the what, live BC, show. BC flew ITV down. flew me oh, down. ITV. And I did the, um, the show with. Um, Just the FA Cup show, on it? Yeah, with James Doyle, who does a lot of the rugby union and hosts it. And the lad at Wimbledon, who got Robbie Earl. So I've flown down. They, they actually, after the, you, you wouldn't imagine what it was like, but after the game, we three and looked with 10 minutes to go. And I remember saying to my assistant physio, I'm going to enjoy this now. And then they went bang, bang, three, two, and then was chewing my nails. <laughs> it was, and it was a funny story. Is, they got promoted that year, Exeter. Yeah, they were. Out of league. They were a good, two out of league, weren't they? They won the league, I think. They were a good side, but I said to Ken Hell yeah. at one stage in the build up, maybe on the day of the game, listen, if we are another cosh, mate, go down. Because they can't take you off. You know, if David had gone down, they'd have brought him off to give him treatment. So I said, if we're under cosh, mate, go down. And I've seen clips of it since where the extra players are going berserk. And they're approaching the linesman and the referee. And uh, the physio went on oh, Martin Rothwell, top lad, character. <laughs> it's a real character. So he eventually came off. The, the game stopped, you remember, for about four or five minutes. So when he caught, I said, What did he say was wrong with him? He said, Cramp. I said, Cramp, he's in gold. <laughs> <laughs> Cramp in gold. And they were going mad extra players. Anyway, we got through it, it was a laugh. And, um, what was it like in the changing room after? Oh, that it's game? mad. Oh, I think it was a picture there. One of the pictures, I think. There. Top one. Top one. Was it was mad. Bad. It was a mad. Big crowd on. And then yeah. we, got, we got drawn to Kidderminster a alley is away. The poor Could have got anyone out of the championship. Yeah. We could have got Leeds. Uh, we got Kidderminster. We got Kidderminster away. Was away. In the away. I always remember that, that day. <clears throat> I always remember when we got there. Well, on the way down, first of all, there was a young lad on the bus. This is this is what it was like in them days. So we had this young lad. He gets on the bus, and Gaz comes up to me and says, "Go, go and say hello to this lad. Make him feel welcome." All about that. Yeah. And uh, he says, "Make him feel welcome." So I said, "Who is he?" When he's a sub goalie. We've got. We didn't because you didn't have you didn't have two or three keepers like. No, but we had a problem. We had a kid on loan anyway. But he'd been cup tied and we couldn't get around it and we asked for dis- dispensation in the league and they wouldn't help us. Yeah. So we had to get this young kid in. I can't remember the last name, but that. He was a scout lad from Liverpool. Just for this one game in the FA Cup? Yeah, because yeah. you don't think you're, you're going to need him. So, really. yeah. And we so had to have one. He, I get on the coach and he goes, go make this lad feel welcome. He's like, who is it? He's it? a goaler. Why? Well, we need a sub goaler because it's the second round of the FA Cup proper. It's on telly and everything. So mm. we've got to have a goaler on the bench, which we never had, did we? No. So I said, right, he went, he won't get on, he's just here for to make up the numbers. After 10 minutes, Carlo gets his so straight head. So we had to go on. He brought down the kid who was at Villa, what was he called? He's played at Villa, yeah, centre forward. Yeah, yeah. 
And he died as I thought he did. Always going through your mind when that happened. Oh, I just can't believe it. We've never seen this kid play. We don't even know his name. Yeah. Arthur Lance, don't even know his no. name. And he goes yeah. in after 10 minutes. I think he scored after that. Carnell took him out on the edge of the box, come out. And he got the referee kick. couldn't wait to send him off at the right goal. He scored the from the free kick. I think it went through his hands or something. You know, yeah. dead simple. I, I felt dead sorry for the kid. I mean, I don't can't remember his name. He's probably playing somewhere now. We knew there was something wrong with the gloves he got after the ones Kenny Everett used to wear in that show. <laughs> <laughs> But that was, that was it wasn't the kids' fault. We probably would have got beat anyway. But we only got beat two 0 with ten men, and, and it, ironically, just before it happened, we were starting to get in the game. Yeah, we was. And we'd we'd start to probe forward, and we'd kept the ball a little bit, and they'd had a couple of little scares. I remember Wurz nearly got in once, and yeah. Alex yeah. Elliot nearly got yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. So everything went against us really. Um, and talking about that in the in the vars uh, down at Truro. Young Delaney got sent off yeah, after half an hour. Yeah, that's how I, I told to uh, ask you about the game there. Well, that was a great case. That was well. similar to the FA Cup. It was the, 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 everything surrounding it was massive. And Giorno come here and they were big spenders, weren't they? Oh, the, the guy, they got about seven promotions on the bench after that. Mm. And multi-millionaire came in and there was lads who shouldn't have been playing that level, really. Yeah, but fortunes. we But uh, that year we had Mickey Norts and uh, Stevie Moores up front and they scored 100 and... Was about 105 goals between, between them in a season. Have they Rosie were, got 55, yeah. Norton got about yeah, it was, crazy it numbers, was, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, the ridiculous numbers. And we finished second. Uh, you know, I said to people, how can you have a front two? They get 100 and odd goals between them, you don't win the league. I mean, it's unheard yeah. of, really. That, in that Vars run, we, we'd be under the cosh in games, probably getting battered, and then we'd be freeing up at half time. Because Mosey and Norton just, yeah, just yeah. create some out of different different level than two. For that one season when they played mm. together, they were unplayable. Like I say, we'd be we'd be under the cosh thinking we're gonna get turned over, and then boom, boom, game over. But the true old day, we, <coughs> we had some great days in that that mm. run because it was all over the country. We went to we were down in Brighton, weren't we? Yeah, yeah, night out in Brighton. Harry Galloway spent two hours in the revolving door. He couldn't get out. <laughs> sure, I'm sure they won that. Ah, uh, well, we've got one nil up here. Um, First leg, yeah. I can't, can't think of the score. Oh, was it two, two legs? Two yeah. legs, yeah. Two legs. So we beat them 1-0 here. They'd not lost all season. They were a, a top team and we beat them here 1-0. I remember we should have been 2-0. I think Norts missed a sitter late on. It's mad how you he remember. Mi- he missed, he missed a good chance to be there also. Uh, and we're not having a go at Mickey because he was wonderful. I mean, he scored a million goals. He was a top, top lad. He missed a good chance at Truro. He missed a good chance at Truro. Yeah. But we had a man sent off there, 10 men after early doors as well. Not a lot of things went for us, really. <laughs> and we got beat 3 We one, won here 1-0. And uh, <coughs> you could have a bet in them days, because it was the, the, the rounds it had got to. The bookmaker was putting odds up. Mm. And a mate of mine had a grand on us at 5-4. to four. And if you remember, they had a big shout for a penalty later on. Mm. The kid went down and really, when I looked at the clips, it was a penalty. My mate, my other pal was with him. He said, looked at me, he said, all the colour drained out of his face. <laughs> <laughs> and the referee went, no penalty. No. <laughs> colour started coming back in. But they were just all little funny stories that were going on around the time. And, and we'd gone away for a few times. I'd spoke to the board. And um, I'd convinced him a couple of trips we stayed away, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. And then we drew Truro. So I asked for a meeting with the board. And they said, yes, 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 we know. You want to go away on the Friday? I said, no, no, no. He said, what, we're going to travel down there? I said, I want to go Thursday. I want to get them down there nice to them. And we had two days in yeah, the yeah. top hotel in Newquay on the beach. Yeah, yeah, man. We trained, and trained. The, the bond was brilliant. Yeah. The on lads, the beach and trained, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then on the day at Truro, they had a fantastic job, if you remember. They put all Tempest stands, there was about yeah. four or 5,000 there. Yeah, there was a lot of that. Yeah. Tempest stands, the TV was there. It was just a, a wonderful day. And we got done 3-1. So we lost 3 2 on I remember out. turning up there and seeing it, because when we turned up on the coach, it was probably half full on yeah. the ground. It was yeah. unheard of, because we were o'clock. playing in front of a couple of hundred people every week. And we turned up there at 2 o'clock on the coach, and there was thousands there. And I, I remember thinking, oh, God, the whole time week. was there. You know, we got a bit nervous, so I think I always yeah. remember that. Yeah. Yeah, it was, but we got and I remember the coach there. journey home was horrendous. I can imagine. Well, it's it a one, long, long journey. One game away. Didn't go bed either that night. I don't no, we, uh, there's a story I will just briefly touch on, but uh, <laughs> I, was, I was called by the, the hotel in the middle of the night when the police arrived. <laughs> 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 no more about that story, but it, 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 you know, 
it was nothing major, but it was uh, it was all part of the story. And uh, the lads went and got smashed in there on that Saturday night over in the UK. Because we stayed Saturday And they were drinking champagne, I never forget. They were drinking champagne, the chairman was fantastic. And there was champagne flowing about, and I looked in a couple of the ashtrays and these big cigars. I remember saying to my sister, what have they done if we'd have won? <laughs> Days. So they were fantastic days, and, and Harry will remember that. Um, we should have got to the Wembley or not. I don't think the final was the first game. It was the, the first game Wembley. at the New Wembley. It would, would have been, been the, the first final. game. Well, the, the FA Vats final was the first game at the New Wembley, and we missed out on that, and that would have been didn't a very Churro, proud moment for Harry Twan. Didn't Ch- Churro win it four or five to five? Yeah, as well? we, it was quite, it, I think it was accepted pretty much that whoever won our semi was going to go on and win it. Win, yeah, yeah. We, I can't remember got in the semi with them, but. You know, I think we'd have been favourites to win it if we'd have got through. Um, you know, a lot of what might have been, but they were fantastic journeys, and, and the club earned an awful lot of money from not particularly Vars, but the FA Cup run. Yeah. I mean, I think we beat XT, yeah, I think the club picked up about 48 grand for that game. Which is it's huge amounts, isn't it? Oh, I mean, this was, I don't know what year it was, to be fair, I can't remember. 2008, I think. It's, it's over 10 years ago, it was a lot of money. Um, and um, they just, uh, you know, it's nice to talk about them days because they were they were really great days and you know with great players. You look at you look because you go through non-league. Like I look back now and I've stopped playing. You look through non-league and there's probably ninety percent of players will go through non-league and just bot about with different teams and play middle middle of the middle mid table. They might get to one, you know, uh, playoff if they look at and then. You look back and you think what you've done with your cup runs and your playoffs and you're winning the leagues. Very few winners in football. Few, it's very few, but yeah. you look back and the, the, like you sat here talking about a few of the stories now and unbelievable memories. And it, it was it built a real closeness as well, a closeness that I'd not seen for mm-hmm. a lot of time in football. And unfortunately, me and David went on to hide, and we replicated that. We had an unbelievable season with some wonderful players and a real bond. And those are special times, you know, as a manager, you look back. And I know them lads will be friends forever. Yeah. You know, Dave might not see one of them lads for six, seven years, but when they see them, they'll be close. Because of what they went through. Yeah. And they went through a lot. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, mm-hmm. me, as regards overseeing it all, it was a great pride to, to see how close they were. Yeah. When it come, when like the time came around when you left uh, Curzon, for Bobsey, for both of you, what was. Uh, what was that like? Was it, it was just tough because, you know, I'd been with Harry 11 years. I'd been with the club 11 years here and I'd decided just after the, I think it was Christmas period that it was time for me to move on. Um, I told the club and so they started preparing who was going to come in. I've seen it out to them this season. And me and Harry fell out for a, for a short period and it was silly really, but I think the old thing, familiarity beats contempt, we'd just been together too long. And he thought that we became friends again soon afterwards and, uh, and we're very close now. Um, but it was tough and we went to a new challenge, both of us. You know, I brought a few of the, the Curzon lads with me, which happens everywhere, but probably upset a few as well. Yeah. Uh, that I took, I think, four or five players came Dave, with Dave the first one? Dave came with me, Dave Cannell came with me, Chris Wurz had come with me. I'd been here a long time as well. Yeah. I needed a change. You needed a challenge. Again. No, nothing against the club or the, you know, anything. The, the club was great, it still is. A lot of respect for everyone that's here, but it was just one of, I've been here for 10 years. Yeah. I just got so it's a long time, I was get, it? Yeah, I was yeah. getting a bit stale. It doesn't happen. I was, I was turning up, I said to Gaz, because I think I told Gaz I was going to go before I knew he was going to go. And I said to him, I said, I'm turning up and I know I'm playing mm. every week. Yeah. You know, start of the season, I know I'm going to be playing. I had no challenge. Yeah, he was quite good though. Yeah, no, but you still need you still need a bit of a. I always think it's good when you turn up and you know. Just, do you feel like you're starting to lose the drive? Yeah, to, I yeah. was losing a bit of, and we've been through all these things we've just spoke about. Mm. You know, over the years we've had all this success. Maybe not so much of winning an actual trophy, but you it's can a real, real highs. Yeah, yeah, you know, cup runs and. I think it turned Dave on and the other lads as well. I was it. They were going to a higher level. Uh, yeah, financially it was better, but it was still not fantastic money. Um, but that was a that was I didn't have it to give you, <laughs> but that was a challenge, and we went to Hyde, and they had, they'd had to win their last game of the season to stay up. Yeah. So 
without going to details, I knew I was going to take over and I was praying that they didn't go down. Anyway, they won. Was that the equivalent to this league? No, no they're in the Conference North then. They would have come down to Evo State Prep. Yeah, so yeah, 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 so this league. So they stayed up on last game of the season. Obviously, I was I was going to come into the club then, so it was important that we did stay up. That was a blessing. That. And then we didn't have a lot of money again. We were favourites to go down. Favourites to get relegated because there's only escaped that previous. I think we were 50 to 1 to win the title. And a few of my pals ran up and said, Come have a bet. I said, oh, I can't. I can't tell you that, I don't know enough about the league to be honest. And I think we were the, given no chance uh, and we won the first 10 on the bounce and went and won the Conference North title. And I think when Dave said, you've got to stay and need a new challenge, you got a challenge there and that was an unbelievable season. Yeah, yeah. Was you captain? Yes. There yes. as well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. What was that like as a player to uh, <clears throat> sort of find, well, you might have won trophies before Curzon, but to like, get your hands on something like that? Unbelievable because... I think a lot of people looked at it, the likes of myself and a few of the other lads from Curzon that had come with us. We'd not played at that level before. You know, people were looking at it saying they, they, they won't be able to play at that level. And you start to doubt yourself a little bit because you do hear these things. He's, he shouldn't be, he's took too many from Curzon. <coughs> but then to go and win it, and it, the standard it was, the standard the was won it. The manner we won it. The football we played was. And David would say it, and, and I thought at the time, because I, I, I knew David very well. David's found it easier at that level than he did at the one below. Yeah. And that okay. was that went for a lot of them. This level that Curzon are at now, the Conference North, it's, it's easy because it's, 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 the standard of football is far better. Better. So the, the games, the, the lower you go in the North West Counties, the Unibon, no disrespect. Competitive. Yeah, big, Very. Big, strong lads and there's not much football played. It's more about a battle. It's quite, mm. quite a physical game. Where the not getting the pitches weren't as good. The surfaces as good. weren't as good. I mean, don't get me wrong, this is a physical league big lads in it but there's more football played and you get a bit yeah. more time to be yeah. able to play so if you can play you'll do alright because you can you'll get a bit more time to play where if you go into the North West Counties you can be a great player but you're never really going to get time to play because I mean it. Carnell was was wonderful um, and still to my day the, the, no respect to the lads I've had and I've had plenty was the best keeper I've ever had him. but he used to say he used to say to, because we played unbelievable football Dave never kicked the ball in fact, one day he said to me, I think I'll need a new pair of boots or I'll need a new pair of gloves. Because Dave started everything. And we just... I worked hard in that summer because we, I walked in there and I, I sacked every player at the club, apart from Callum Byrne. Mm. Um, was it, what was it like, like the fans? Did they sort of like... They didn't want me. No. A lot of them didn't want me. So you had to um, prove yourself? Yeah, a lot of them said, what they appointed him for? There's no experience, blah, 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 blah. And we sat down with the board and I'll never forget... I'm talking to Martin Booth, who had been with me briefly here. Um, well, no, more than brief, a couple of years ago. Yeah, yeah, he comes to play, doesn't he? And they said to him, you know, what are you, what are you, what are you, your target, what's your target? And I remember Martin saying to the board, and there was like a little silence, and he said, to win every game. And one of the board of said, every game? He said, yeah, every game. And we were very positive, and as the pre, the pre season wore on, we were getting good players and good players, and we knew, players know, you know, in training, you just knew that we had a massive, big bunch of good footballers. Mm -hmm. And the football we played was, was, was fantastic. At what point did you realise he was going to win the league? Well, you had a chance at least. Well, we played, but I don't know if David agrees, we played Man City uh, pre season at the pitch, and, and by the way, the stadium at Hyde, uh, and the surface, and David's never played on the surface like it was like a bowling game, wasn't it? Yeah, because this weren't like it is now when mm. we was here. It was still under construction, wasn't it? Yeah, the, the, the pitch at Hyde was unbelievable. But anyway, we played Hyde, uh, played Man City. And it was pre the season was about to start then. And we were wonderful on the day, if you remember. He was... Craig Bellamy played. Near Bellamy and Newer. Newer. They had a lot of... Mancini's son. Three million for, six million for. They had a right side out. And they pinged it about. I'd say what we pinged it about. And I remember the reserve team as he came up to us, he said... I hadn't met him before, he said, Gary, he said, tell you what, what a wonderful team you've got. And I knew he meant it. I didn't need to be told, but I knew myself. Season starts, uh, and I think probably a lot of what people want to have failed. Mm -hmm. uh, always, I've always thought, and still maintain, a lot of jealousy in football. People were waiting for us to fall flat on our faces, and I think when you win the first 10 on the bounce, which is still a record, and probably won't be passed anywhere, not for a long time. Um, you know, I, I was in stores where people come to uh, 
bars and stuff after games. I've had them, by the way. They've won, right? After six, seven games, I've had they've won again. People couldn't believe it. Mm. It was unbelievable. And I get little, see, I was thinking about it because the, the way we did it as well was just different. It was a pleasure for me. I, didn't have, I was lucky because I didn't have to pay. I just sit in the dugout every week and just get entertained. And it was just a dream. As a manager, when you're on that sort of streak of winning, how do you keep that up? Do you sort of tell them to go out and keep doing it? Or? They, were very, they were very responsible kids, very determined kids, so they knew themselves. They didn't have to do, uh, do an awful lot, to be, to be fair. It's probably the least that season that I've known you. You didn't lose your temper. No, very, I, didn't, very, I didn't have to. Didn't have to? Well, it, there's a case. I mean, I think someone said to me once, I think it was Josh Brazell, who was a player as well, he'd spoke to someone, and, and I don't know, I was there in the crowd or whatever, watching this game. And uh, they'd got beat, this team, and they said, did the manager at the time had a go at this team? And he said, no, and Josh Brazell said to him, we used to get bigger bollockings and we'd come in 2 nil up. <laughs> so, you know, that's how it was, but the lads were very close. And afterwards, the bond, you watch the bond, it was just, you couldn't separate them. That's a big thing in football for me, you know, yeah. the, the, the team, morale, and if you get a, a group of players that are close, you know, they socialise together, etc. The close mm. friends, they'll always perform out there for you. Do you think it's more difficult to get that today than what it was back then? I think there were more old, old school players and I, I don't know about now how, how easy it would be to get that camaraderie that close. So I don't know, I'm, I'm sure it's still achievable, but it was just, it grew and it grew very quickly. And there were certain things that happened in that season that I had that just got us even closer together. I mean, I, I remember getting a phone call one Saturday from a newspaper, Sunday newspaper, saying they were going to break a story the next morning that one of my players had slept with a very famous lady. Remember it well? Yes. What was your reaction to that? Well, they just asked me to comment. I said, no, I'm not going to comment. Not, not at all. But I got to the... It quickly spread like wow, It was on the back of the news of the world and somewhere else. And it quickly got around the player and the team said, what the hell's going on? I said, he's a young boy. Uh, I think he could work for us. I said, what do you mean? I think he could work. I said, I think he could. So I got in the changes on the Monday night, we got a game and I walk in and the, the news of the world is plastered over all the walls in the first team dressing room. All quotes, all the newspapers are plastered everywhere. I remember going in it and, and having a go at the lad and he said I was more frightened to tell you that it wasn't what was <laughs> But it was a, a great thing and it got the lads together again. It didn't need reconfirmed really, but if you remember, it just got them together again a little bit. Um, and it was good fun, it got a good publicity and it was just the sort of things that just kept everything just rolling along and, and the lads became very close. Anyway, it was happening, but that thing just seemed to just throw a little bit more in and, and it was like us against the world, if you like. Yeah. And it was brilliant. Where'd you, where'd you go from, uh, obviously you got promoted, what happened? Couldn't get a job. No? No. Well, well, did, did you not stay high then? Did no, I, f I, I fell out of, with the chairman. Oh, really? He was a strange what? character. Yeah. He let us down, in my opinion. I'll, I'll tell people that all day and night. He did. Um, did you I think, say I think he let the players down. No, yeah. He let the, we got too big for him. That was always my opinion. I think we got too big for him. I'd rather not say what happened, but... It all ended terribly. It ended terribly after the season we just had was unbelievable. And, you know, the fans and everyone else at the club was absolutely first class. So yeah. But the chairman... Let's just leave that there. The spectators were fantastic and they dragged us along as well. Yeah, yeah. Lots of good people at the football yeah. club. Great club. Supporters were brilliant and I think that previous season, I think the, the, the average crowd had dropped below 300, I think. And we averaged, I think, something like 770 that year. So we brought the people yeah. back in uh, and we had some wonderful. I remember going beating Bridge up at Bridge on New Year's Day where we were fantastic on the day and there was a good few thousand. The place was packed. How suspended for that? Yeah, we didn't need you. Uh, we won comfortably and played so well. Chris Wurzer missed it as well. We both from memory. Yeah. They were both sat at, at got, Both got sent off at Worcester. Oh, that was a funny Worcester story. away. That was a funny story. We played away at Worcester with 2 0. I think we were 2 0 down. 2 0 with you too, well. 2 0 down. He gets sent off. So he, for something, he was a nightmare. He always. was a nightmare. Always. Never shut up. Always in the ref's ear. And there were, uh, I could list a number of lots of occasions where he'd go and get booked later on. And we got beat. And I said, why have you done that? And he used to say to me, if 
I'm getting me, I'm going to smash someone before I come off. And he did that. You can't do that these days. You can't do that these <laughs> can't days. get away with that these days. So he gets, he gets sent off, and as he's coming off, I'd have gone and said, get in the changing rooms, let us down, get in. Soon after, words had come off. And I slated words, and I said, I can't believe it, without telling you've gone and done something so stupid. I'll speak to you later, and they both went in. About 10 minutes to go, I got sent off. <laughs> so, so I remember walking down the trip side at Worcester and I'm getting dogs abuse and they had a metal cage there if you remember and they were rattling it and screaming abuse at me and I walked in, I kicked the door open and them two were thinking I'm going to absolutely slaughter them and they won't remember their heads are down and I looked up and said has it finished? I said no, I said what are you doing? I said I've just been sent off as well <laughs> <laughs> so it was, that was a funny story man about Worcester that was a funny story it was a good laugh to a basic finish. Yeah, we drew too well. And there was, a, you know, when you look at that league that year, there's some wonderful teams in it. Mm-hmm. Some great, but still a bit had a great side. Um, but yeah, they were, they were good days. Um, and we left the club. Um, and it was a sorry tale, really. Did, did you not play again after that? Yeah, and I went to yeah, the great great FC players. United yeah. after that. And I, had, I spent four seasons at FC. Won the league there as well with them. Captain them. Captain for many games, but I weren't like officially captain. But me and the, the lad that played captain sort of played the same position, so I was I captained him in a lot of games. And I was playing here actually, I was using the ground here while mm. the FC's ground were being built. And Curzon was this was the Unibon Premier, mm. so the year before, a couple of years before Curzon got promoted, and we we won the league here. And Curzon was in our league, I think we, we beat him twice that year. We won the league here against uh, Stourbridge, I think. No, it wasn't Stourbridge, not that. But we won from the middle of the night. Yeah, we won. Uh, we, it was unbelievable. That's another club, unbelievable. I, I was lucky to be fair to play for the three clubs I played for. You know, Curzon, I didn't. FC have got unbelievable respect for all three clubs. And Glossop, yeah, Glossop as well. But I weren't at Glossop that long. Young boy. Only young lad there, but I won the I won the Derbyshire Cup there as well. Must have been me. Eh? Winning trophies. Come and denominate us, Dave Butch. <laughs> but, yeah, so I went on and played four years for them. Uh, and yeah. they were in the early days, really. Yeah. Well, where the crowds were unbelievable. Crowds following me, I did. It's told yeah, many stories, yeah. yeah. unbelievable. That's a, Great stories. Went to Germany, Switzerland, played on tours. Yeah, because they went to uh, Leipzig, is that right? They went to La- That was a year before I joined. Uh, Mickey Knox, who's one of my best mates now. He's like a legend there. He yeah. absolutely loves Knox. Well, he's a legend there. Yeah, he's a legend everywhere. He's been really Mickey. Uh, yeah. That was a year before Leipzig, but when I was there, I went to Switzerland and Germany on so it was that was a different that was different from Curzon and I it was unbelievable. Mm. The amount of fans and you do think you're a footballer there. And we had success there, like I say, we got them out of the Unibon Prem where they've been for the Seven, eight years. I well, think. you were there with the good yeah. FA Cup run as well. We had a good FA Cup run, got to second round FA Cup there. And then I was just getting older when I, I, I remember going back to Hyde when you went, mm. Louis went back to Hyde for a bit. And I went on loan and I remember I was only there a couple of weeks and that was all in my mind to stop playing. I remember we played Darlington at home and you had a load of young lads at Hyde then. No, we the same. Kids. And we got smashed five one. I come off, I remember my nose was smashed to bits. And, Kit lumps out. I was trying to lose my temper and I just remember coming off all my boots in the bin. Slagged a few he did out. actually throw them in the bin. I quickly put the lid on. <laughs> <laughs> I threw my boots in the bin that day and uh, I just went home and that was it. I didn't play again after that. Never but he had, I and mean, obviously he didn't see Dave, but Dave was a wonderful footballer and a great character, a winner. You know, as a, as a manager, and lads are all different. And I'm not, I'm not having a go at different personalities, but you could get beat in a game and you know that there's certain lads after 10 minutes have, have forgotten it and they plan the Saturday night out. I tried to stay away because it used to frustrate me but I knew that when we got to be I looked at Dale and he was angry oh, and he wouldn't speak to anyone. He used to be horrible. No. I, I, no. I, 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 didn't, I hated losing Saturday night. It used to keep stay with you. But I used to turn my phone off in the early days of management. If we got beat I used to turn my phone off until like uh, Tuesday because I, I couldn't sleep. It was just... It meant that much to you as well, yeah. Yes, it meant a lot to the, the early days here when we was at Curzon with, Gip, with, with Gary and Derry Carr back mm. in them days who, who played a lot of mm. games pro. Losing was never, ever accepted in no. any way. 
you could get beat off a team a couple of divisions higher in a cup and you still well, no. never accept it. How did you sort of drill that into your players or was that just personal traits, hey, Bram? Well, I think, you know, I, I did some blog for someone not long ago when I was over in Spain, uh, a guy contacted me. I think you quickly, I quickly identified winners and that was my benchmark, that was my yardstick, you know, and, and then I would, I would go to these players like David, like to Matty Raven, to Wurzel, Chris Kerr, I'd go to lads because I respected their opinion and they knew they were with them when they were getting, they were close to them when we were getting beat 3 0 somewhere. They were in the dressing room afterwards, they were on a night out maybe, and they got to know the character a little bit closer and different to what I would. And I would often ask them, what do you think? And I knew if they give me the rubber stamp that's right, I knew I had a character. And the more characters you had, the, the more chance you got of uh, winning things. And we had lots of them. Lots of them. Tough, tough changing rooms. Mm. Remember the likes when we had Roger Giggs and Alex Martin and Curley and all them in the changing room. Brutal. Brutal changing rooms. You had to be strong. You like stories. Yeah, you had to be a strong, strong character. Didn't you? If you was weak, you, you wouldn't last. You got left behind. And there was a few that had le that left over the yeah, years yeah, because yeah. they couldn't handle it. Good footballers, mm. but just didn't have the, the character. But I, th I think football's changed. I mean, you see the way Curzon's set up these days with all the, the technology they have and you mm. know, just, just being in here with the, the, the table tennis and the dartboard and things like that. Football's changed massively. And I think the players have me. I, I don't see it because I'm not around it that much, but looking from the outside in, I just think it has changed a lot of the game. You know, we had, <coughs> I was a midfield player, but, uh, you know, obviously Dave played in midfield, we played, so played right back and played centre half as well. But we had lads in there that you just wouldn't want to play against. Mm. You know, Chris Curley, Matt Wayne, and James Agu. Chris Wurzel was one of the strongest lads. Chris Curley. I mean, when when Chris Curley used to tackle, they stayed tackled. You know, and he would, t he would lay down at him and then tread across him. And I remember Tom Baker telling me once there was Halifax and they'd drawn us in a cup or something. And a few of the lads who didn't know us or know the people, the staff around here, said, oh, I won't be happy. And Tom Baker said, I'll tell you what, that'll be the toughest game you have all year because we won't play anyone in our league that will give you an afternoon like they will. And we beat them. And he remember this, this thing he said to me, you know, he said to some lads, he said, Jesus Christ. If you, had, if you beat us, you had to fight for it. It was hard, hard work first. You had to work hard to play, mm. simple as that. And I think that's still, like we were saying about how football's changed, I think it's still that today. Teams work hard, they've had mm. a chance, no matter how good they are. Mm. You know, like people will say Curzon haven't got a big wage bill in this league and stuff like that, but, you know. If you get fit and competitive, you've got a chance in any level of football, I think. You know, I, used to, I was quite well known, I think, of getting the lads in probably two weeks before anybody else. And they'd, they'd all get in far, they'd all be moaning and moaning, and back from Mickey Norton. What was pre season like? Hard. Yeah. Very hard. And back in them days, it was, you know, and when, no disrespect to Derek Hall, but back when he was the assistant manager, he did all the training. It was a lot of long running. You know, we'd just take us around a, a reservoir or somewhere and we'd mm. just run for an hour, an hour and a half. And then we'd, we'd go. That's another thing, after every pre season and after every game or training session, we all had a pint together. Mm. So it would just run. We could do a full pre-season session, absolutely run for hours, but we'd all have a pint together after. And then when Boots come in later on, Mark yeah, it was Boone, more high tech, and it was very, 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 very good. A bit uh, like what you see now with Mark. It and wasn't long. I mean, I watched Mark and Will do the first session here, and, and it, there was a lot of things that Marty would do, and it was intense. It was very well organised. It was a clever session. Uh, Martin was like that. Martin was like that. Martin was like that. But like. <laughs> But she said, you know, the, the old days were different. And I remember when this, this warming down first came in and we used to see teams doing it. And I said to Derek Carr, my sister once said, what do you think about this warming down? They should do it. He said, no. I said, why? He said, you're two parts behind all night. <laughs> <laughs> that was always like it. It's, it's, it's <coughs> and when I, I first started seeing like the, the real, like how, how professional and, it can get when I probably went to it was coming in at hide a little bit mm. but then when I went to FC they had everything was done professionally you know they had they had two or three physios and they were all fully qualified physios they weren't like we had Martin Rothwell back in the day great bloke but he was a sponge man you know he was an old fashioned sponge man 
Yeah. We've, I went to FC and we had free physios. They had everything you need to get a picture up of this. <laughs> when you think about Martin and the, and the characters there, he always wanted to go to FC and win. And we had played FC so many times in my time, I never ever won. And he's a mad blue. He said, I'd love to beat us at that end. He said, and if we do, someone goes down, when I pump the shirt, I just drop his head. Yeah. <laughs> but but Martin was a character. We'd never beat him, could we? No, never beat him. But someone would go down, he'd be down within two or three minutes. He used to come back and he'd say, what's wrong? And he said, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's the physio. So but he was, oh, he was a character. Great, great character, Martin. So you can see what it's like now. I mean, I've been watching a few of them videos, you know, on YouTube that occurs on a put it But they film the train. Oh, it's brilliant. It's unbelievable. It's brilliant. With all these vests on and it's, it's fantastic. You know, I, I look how much this club has come on now Ugh. and progressed. It's a different world from when we were there. And I know, I know because we have the greatest budget, you know, a lot of the clubs in this league will have a, a lot more money. But I tell you what, when you, t- when you t- come off the main road, then you drive into here, you think you're coming to a football club. Yeah, 100%, I agree. It feels like a football I remember playing FC in that final year. It was four and a half, five thousand, it mm-hmm. couldn't move. And I was at the top stand watching an hour before the game, whatever. It was like Wembley there, there was thousands coming down for oh, an hour. So this feels like a, a, a football stadium. So although, you know, Mark might not be able to match some of the words, he's still got a lot of things to sell here. The, yeah. the surface, the club, uh, the training facilities. I mean, they're big things to sell to players. You know, they're good tools. Also, I mean, I, when I look at how things have changed, I mean, my brother-in-law, Jim, Jim Newall, uh, and my nephew, Oliver Newall, um, and then now the, the, the pretty much the new face of Curzon. Um, Jim's an absolute football nut. You know, if I say to you that I get a phone call from him over in Spain, maybe half past seven most mornings, and all he wants to do is talk about football. Uh, his son has now come on board, and I see the enthusiasm, you know, like yourself, Jordan, you know, with, with Oliver, and how they're really taking the club forward. You know, it's, there's big changes here. You know, Harry Galloway, Harry Twam, they don't suffer fools and you know they've really brought Jim forwards now as regards the board and obviously the chairman Wayne. But Jim's probably my best friend. He married my sister many, many years ago. Um, and I think the club's in fantastic hands. I mean Jim was involved many years ago with me on, on the playing side, but now he's a very successful businessman. Um, and the club has, has made a great signing with, with uh, Jim now coming in as vice chairman, Wayne as chairman. Oliver really taking it forward on, on the media side and, and I mean he loves to listen to him on the PA system I mean he's terrific so yeah the, the club's going through a different spell and, and when myself and, and Jim have left this uh, this mortal coil hopefully Oliver will take it on and, and you know our family is pretty much in sconce with the football club yeah, right, so, my son's playing here now yeah I was going to say I was going to ask because um, you're getting into coaching here am I right then? yeah I'm trying to get involved now I spoke to Wayne the chairman Wayne South Kelvin going to help me get me through my badges yeah. uh, I want to get involved to be honest when I stopped playing football I never fancied coaching no never really f- I think there's a lot of players like that don't they then yeah. sort of after the, you have the break and yeah. like the time away from it you yeah, can't, can't stay away yeah, you've got to go to IKEA and the missus and Garner Centre so you've got to find yeah. something well, I, I never did I never really fancied coaching especially fancy coaching kids I did it a few years ago uh, but now my son's playing and I go watching him all over the show and I'm taking him to different training sessions and a bit of a bug back for it you know yeah. I'm looking and thinking you know I, I think I could have a go at this so like I say I pulled Wayne seeing if they could help me uh, and yeah they just said come in and help Mark I want to just help Mark and learn off Mark because Mark's I know he does the first team and he's doing a good job here but he's brilliant with the kids yeah he, Mark, he's Mark, still heavily involved oh that, massively so involved and he's, he brings all the kids into the club basically so yeah. all the kids right throughout the club will probably come through Mark at some point he does like the under fours they don't have a team but they're coming in at three and four yeah. and he has them until they go to under eight and then he passes them on and it, I mean the work he does is I mean, and that's the reason why I brought Addy here not, obviously not just because of Curzon because I played here but because of Mark because he's, tr- he's, he's top, top player class there's also there's, there's a clear pathway for like kids obviously it's a long yeah. a long time but you've had four academy graduates into the first team this season so yeah. it shows they can make the progression yeah exactly, exactly. The first team. it's great it's a brilliant run club and like I say, the coaches, you see them here, they, they, they work hard and I thought I'll have, a, I'll have a go. So I've just done my CRB check now, that's just been completed, so hopefully. There's nothing on it. I mean, see. 
But it, it would have been criminal for Dave not to get involved in this football club. You know, it's yeah. record number of games, great experience. He's won this league a couple of times. Yeah. Won this league a couple of times. Uh, a great attitude that I'm sure he's still in young kids. Uh, competitiveness that, you know, is, is paramount when he's bringing kids through. So it's fantastic they've got him involved. It'd be criminal, I think, if he'd have gone and done his stuff elsewhere. I think Dave, one day, all being well, will manage somewhere. And I think he'd be terrific. And I think then he'll you realise how hard the job was for me to have him as a player. <laughs> but I, I, want, I want to get involved with the kids. That, you know, the kids that play with my lad, Harry now, they've got a top little bunch of kids, you know what I mean? And, it's brilliant. And Mark's with them, and I want to learn off Mark. I want to just go and you know, learn off him. Cause See, Mark had a terrific football career, and he was a, a real good footballer. Didn't he sign for you, Mark, didn't he? Yes, that's that when it comes to Kurt, uh, the old Nash. The old him, Nash. Yeah, I mean, Mark had probably... He was at the end of his career. He was near the end and the start anyway. I could but, Royce, though, but it was a wonderful football, a lovely left, left, peg. left peg. He could open the tin of peas with his left foot. I mean, he was a wonderful footballer. And it, I've never spoken to him about it, but I got more out of managing than I ever did playing. And yeah. I remember this is an interview with George Gray, you won't remember George Gray, played for Arsenal. And he said the same thing, he went on to Arsenal Spurs, and they said, how do you compare it to play? I bet you miss it. And he said, yeah, I do, but... I honestly get more satisfaction out of managing than playing. It's different kind you of can take well. a little bit from everyone. Yeah. And when you see them successful, that's the real big thing and, and what they've achieved. And there won't be many around that has got his TV. There's things he's won. Yeah, so um, your background, the club now? I'm d- sort of. I'm going to be going back to Spain in, in a few weeks, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've come over and I've kind of got tied up a little bit here with a few things to do and I've spoke to Mark a few times and yeah, I said I'd like to help him and I'll watch a few games for Mark while I'm here and try and help him a little bit and um, yeah, just have a good, some good chats with Mark. I met Will the other time, uh, the first training session for the first time and they're, they're good people and the session was clever, it was intense, it was very well organised and it looks like he's got a lot of players that can play as well so... You know, good thing. I asked him if I could have a few quid and win the league this year, and he said, "Well, hang on, yet, guys." <laughs> <laughs> but why not? Why not? Why not? Let's go and win it. Off, man. You've got to start off looking for that. You know, I had a comment last year that Stockport County had beaten uh, Curzon, and they've got more money in the bigger club, and they should beat as well. I'm sorry, no, not having that. No, not having that. I don't care what anyone says. And that's ridiculous. I think you go in there and you can. Obviously, not going to be a Premier League club, but why? Why can't they beat anyone in this league? Of course they can, and they will do. I'm sure I they think will. He's made some great signings, Mark. Yeah, there's some good kids yeah. in there. Some good players coming for the winter. Yeah, definitely. You know, so, so the, the board and the supporters, I think, should be very excited about it. And you know, I'll uh, be giving me great pride and satisfaction to see him do to do well this year. Yeah, yeah, and and why not go and compete at the very top? I think they could do. Don't be frightened of of the Yorks and the Dal and whoever these teams in these big clubs that are, have fallen from grace and come down they've got loads and loads of money so what? So yeah it's probably the perfect way to finish um, if both of you obviously won, won this league what would your message be to the players for, for this season? I mean obviously Mark will, will come up with a part of the play and, and they've got to believe in that and trust in that and to be competitive to not leave anything out on the pitch to and to believe, because th- there's no reason any team in this league should, should walk over curves. I, I wouldn't have that at all. And if you have a good start, who knows? So, yeah, it looks like he's got good players. I think he's got good um, good ideas. I think Will looks, you know, the, the top coaches, the pair of them. So, yeah, it's about recruitment. Uh, if he gets good players and it looks like he's got good players, then, yeah, go and believe he can win the league. That would be my message. I'd just say work hard and enjoy it. Enjoy it, the main thing. Mm. If you enjoy it, you'll, do, you'll be good at something. Perfect. Gentlemen, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very, Thank much. You very much. Thank you. Perfect. You're welcome.